Hi everybody and welcome to another episode with the Anxious Resistance. Today I'm talking about a medication called Riluzol and how it's a potential new off-label treatment for anxiety and depression. Okay, first off, let's talk about how Riluzol works. In recent years, ketamine has caught a lot of attention as an effective and fast-acting treatment for depression and anxiety. It sparked a lot of interest in other medications that have similar actions. Riluzol is one of those medications. Rilu Riluzol is sold under the brand names Exervin, Rilutec, and Tiglutic. Riluzol is classified therapeutically as a neuroprotectant. It is classified pharmacologically as a benzothiazole. Riluzol has several mechanisms of action, one of which is lowering the release of glutamate and blocking the NMDA receptor. This allows riluzol to lower the actions of glutamate. Overstimulation of glutamatergic or glutamate neurons has been related to increased levels of depression and anxiety. Ketamine is theorized to work in the same way to pronounce effect. So it works efficiently, it works well. And that's why you see ketamine used by a lot of people who have treatment resistant depression and have failed other trials of medications. What is Riluzol currently used for? Riluzol has typically been used to treat ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease. It is said to have neuroprotective effects by preventing the excitotoxicity in the glutamatergic neurons. Okay, I know these are some, some big jargon words here. So basically, it, it prevents the neuron from becoming too excited, and it's talking about specific neurons that work with glutamate as a neurotransmitter. So one of the benefits of riluzol over that of ketamine is that it does not have psychomimetic or hallucinatory effects. It has a vastly better side effect profile than that of ketamine. It also holds some advantages over ketamine, such as it can be taken orally and does not require an IV. Ketamine must also be administered in clinics to monitor the IV and potential hallucinatory effects from the medication. Okay, so let's talk about some of the side effects of Riluzol. It has a half-life of about 12 hours. Its side effects include dizziness, insomnia, fast heart rate, dry mouth, nausea, abdominal pain, joint pain, eczema, and others. Riluzol is well tolerated and does not have any black box warnings like many other medications used to treat depression and anxiety. Okay, so what is the evidence for using Riluzol for anxiety and depression? There have been quite a few quality studies that have shown evidence in favor of using Riluzol off-label for the treatment of anxiety and depression and other psychiatric disorders. So one study states several off-label trials have suggested that Riluzol, either as a monotherapy, so by itself, or as an augmentation of standard therapy, reduces symptoms of obsessive compulsive disorder, unipolar and bipolar depression, and generalized anxiety disorder. In studies of psychiatric ill patients conducted to date, the drug has been quite well tolerated. Common adverse effects include nausea and sedation. So it's well tolerated and it seems to have very positive good effects for multiple things not just anxiety and depression. In this open label pilot study, Riluzol at a fixed dose of 100 milligrams per day was associated with rapid and sustained anxiolytic, so relieving anxiety, effects in patients with generalized anxiety disorder and had favorable tolerability. One other study says, this study supports the utility of Riluzol as a prophylactic medication for preventing anhedonia anxiety, and helplessness symptoms associated with stress-related disorders. So there are also several other studies that claim Riluzol's use in this manner could be beneficial for those suffering from treatment-resistant anxiety and depression. I'll link them in the description down below. You can check out the article on our website and it has all the information that I'm going through here. So the evidence for Riluzol's use is there. It has not caught on with psychiatrists yet because it is a new medication for ALS. So so it's it hasn't even been on the market that long for ALS, not to mention finding other uses for it. So why might Riluzol be a good option for you? Riluzol is unique in its mechanism of action. It is similar but different from ketamine. It has convincing evidence behind its use. If you are someone who has already failed medication trials, 
both first and second line treatments for anxiety and depression, where I lose all may be something that you want to look at. Your psychiatrist may be hesitant to prescribe this medication at first, showing them some of the evidence in this video that's also linked in the article below will help them help maybe convince them to give this a try for you. Okay, so what is the anxious resistance take on Riluzol? Out of all the investigational antidepressants that we report on, Riluzol shows some of the most promise. It is well tolerated, it has fairly robust evidence behind its use, as you can tell from the articles mentioned and the articles linked in that article below. It is already on the market, has benefits over things like ketamine because it can be taken orally, it doesn't have to have an IV, it's well tolerated, doesn't have the same side effects, but it hasn't caught on yet. It needs to catch on with prescribers, but this medication shows a lot of potential and it's something worth looking into. Talk with your doctor about it, show them the evidence, show them the studies, and um, talk about it. Hopefully this is something that can help you here at The Anxious Resistance. We like to shed light on all treatment options for mental health. There are many who do not receive enough relief and depression is one of the leading causes of disability worldwide. We're looking into all this stuff for you. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe for more content just like this, and thank you so much for watching.